The year is 1413, and the bloody conflict known as the Ottoman Interregnum has finally come to an end. For over a decade, the sons of Sultan Bayezid have been fighting among themselves for supremacy, and now the fourth son, Mehmed, has come out on top. He chooses Edirne, one of the two capitals of the empire, as his main residence, but he does not sit firmly on the throne. Although all of his brothers, who were once rulers, have now been defeated and killed, that doesn't mean he's the last son of Bayezid alive, and not long after coming to power, Mehmed's rule would be challenged. The man who tried to depose him was Mustafa, a younger brother of his by around 10 years. Just like Musa and his father, he had been taken prisoner following the Battle of Ankara, but wasn't released as quickly and had to follow the Timurids back to Samarkand in modern-day Uzbekistan. He was held captive there until the death of Timur in 1405, after which he returned to Anatolia and sought refuge within the territories of the Turkish Beyniks. But now Mustafa decided to re-emerge from the shadows and kindly asked Mehmed to partition the empire with him. When his brother refused, Mustafa, with the backing of Mercea of Valachia and Junaid of Aydin, took up arms. This wouldn't be enough to take down Mehmed I, however, and after being easily defeated in battle, he had no choice but to flee to Byzantine-controlled Thessalonica. Due to pressure from his brother, the Byzantines eventually agreed to exile him to the island of Lemnos. But Mehmed wasn't out of the woods yet. Having gotten rid of his troublesome brother, he soon discovered a plot involving his nephew, Orhan, in other words, a son of his elder brother, Suleiman. Apparently, the Byzantine emperor was trying to use him against the sultan, but since the plot was uncovered, Orhan was blinded for his betrayal, and nothing ever came out of it. The final and most serious threat to Mehmed's rule would not come from his family, though, nor would it come from foreign invaders. Instead, it came in the form of a preacher, known as Sheikh Bedreddin. He had been born near Edirne in 1359, and was the son of a Muslim father and a Christian mother. In his youth, Bedreddin served as a Qadi, a judge based on Islamic law, to the Ottoman soldiers on the marches. He then studied logic and astronomy in Konya, followed by further studies in Cairo. There he met with famous theologians, lawyers and physicians, and was appointed tutor to the Mamluk crown prince. His stay in Cairo also led Bedreddin to convert to Sufism, which in turn made him travel to Tabriz and Ardabil in what is now northwestern Iran, where he could deepen his knowledge on the subject. Eventually, being surrounded by philosophers and mystical orders led Bedreddin to develop some unusual beliefs. He thought that all religions were at their essence the same, and that opposition between different faiths, as well as opposition between different social classes, served to hinder the oneness of the individual with God. Furthermore, he advocated the communal ownership of property and the equality of Muslims and Christians. With this explosive set of beliefs, Bedreddin returned to Anatolia and began preaching. In a land ravaged by feudal conflict yet diverse in faith, his combination of ideas worked well. During the interregnum, he even managed to gain the support of one of the pretenders, Musa. Under him, Bedreddin served as Kadiaskar, or chief military judge, a role which he utilized to gain favor with the frontier warriors by distributing land to them. After Musa's eventual defeat, Bedreddin was exiled to Isnik, and his followers lost their land. However, in 1415, two years into Mehmed's reign, he escaped the city, traveling first to Sinop, and from there across the Black Sea to Wallachia. By 1416, the time had come for his revolt to break out. Bedreddin himself crossed the border into Ottoman-held Dobruja, now in northeastern Bulgaria, but led by his disciples, the standard of revolt was raised in various parts of the empire. One uprising led by Berklüge Mustafa erupted in Karaburun, near Izmir, and consisted of roughly 6,000 Muslim and Christian peasants. Soon afterwards, another one, led by Tolak Kemal, erupted in Manisa. Altogether, these uprisings went on for four years before Mehmed could regain control. But the rebellion in Manisa was put down, and Tolak Kemal, along with thousands of his followers, were executed. Berklüge's rebellion was more difficult to deal with, in fact it managed to defeat several armies before finally being crushed by the vizier Bayezid Pasha. Some 2,000 peasants, and of course Berklüge himself, were executed in the aftermath. Bedreddin was also captured by Mehmed's forces, and was hanged in the marketplace of Ceres, 
now located in the Greek region of Macedonia. But Mehmed's reign wasn't only about trying to cling on to power, in fact, during his only eight years as sole ruler, he also managed to pull off a number of conquests, capturing parts of Albania, the Jandarid Emirate, as well as the Armenian kingdom of Cilicia from the Mamluks. Considering that he, in the end, did manage to consolidate his power and piece the Ottoman Empire back together, he has become widely known as its second founder. Mehmed I lies buried in a mausoleum in Bursa, not far from the celebrated Green Mosque, which he also commissioned. <laughs> 